Cheryl, are you still out doing the shopping right now? I just wanted to let you know that I would really love it if we could have some fish for dinner. Would you be a dear and make sure to buy some fresh swordfish for dinner while you're out? Hey Melissa, I'm really sorry to say, but I'm actually not feeling so good. I haven't even left to do the shopping. I've just been resting in bed all day. Oh, I see. Did you catch a cold or something like that? I'm not quite sure what it is, actually. But my head just feels so heavy and I'm having a really hard time concentrating on things. But I don't have a fever, so I don't think that it's a cold. Hmm, I see. Well, it sounds to me like it could be menopause. Do you really think that that's what it could be? I do, actually. I'm sure of it now. I remember that I was around your age when I was going through it. Hmm, well, I guess it could be possible. Either way, I just think that I need to lie down for the day. I really hope you don't mind, but could I ask you to cook dinner tonight? I just don't think I'll be able to any use to anyone like this. Ah, darn, I really did want swordfish for dinner. Well, how about we just ask Sally to pick some up for us on her way home for school? Hmm, I really wonder if it would be worth asking her. I feel like she's been getting home from school later and later. Not to mention the fact that she hates helping out around the house and never offers a hand. I'm not sure if that's totally fair. I think she does help out every now and then. Are we talking about the same girl, as in your daughter, my granddaughter? I don't think I've ever seen her do any kind of work around the house. And ever since she started high school, she's gotten into dyeing her hair and listening to the rock music. I just don't know what is happening for kids to the world these days. It's sad the direction our society is headed. I really don't think those are necessarily bad things in themselves. I mean, it's not like she has a uniform or any rules against dyeing her hair. And besides, the kinds of music people listen to are always changing. I think she's just finding herself. But she's only in high school. You can't really trust someone that age to know what's best for them, right? And don't you worry about what the neighbors think seeing her like that? Well, that's what I meant by finding herself. But anyways, when kids graduate high school, they're usually 18, so... We're not always going to be able to control them, you know? And you're okay with that? Just how long are you going to let your daughter get away with doing whatever she wants? All you're doing to her by treating her this way is turning her into a selfish little girl. You really think that Sally is a selfish person? Of course I do. Whenever I talk to her, she always sounds like she's trying to start a fight. Not only that, but she called me an old hag the other day. Oh my, I see. Well, if that's the case, then I'll make sure to have a long talk with her about using that kind of language. You need to do more than that. You really ought to be disciplining her more strictly. At this rate, you're just going to be raising a future criminal. I really don't think that things are that bad yet, Melissa. Sally is still a teenager and is in a rebellious phase right now. But I think it's great that she's becoming such a strong-willed girl at the same time. Not only that, but she works really hard in her studies and always gets good grades. You really think that Sally has ever studied a day in her life? I've never seen her look in a textbook while she's at home. I think that she studies a lot in her room by herself. And other days, I know that she goes to the library to study after school as well. Maybe that's why she's been coming home late. I'm not sure if it's right to judge someone based on what they're not doing just because you don't see it. So you're telling me you really think she's coming home late after studying? Cheryl, do you really think that's true? Then I have some beachfront property to sell you in Kansas. That girl is out there causing havoc and raising hell. I'm sure of it. How can you be so sure, though? You've said yourself you haven't actually seen her do any of these things. 
open your eyes. You know what girls her age can be like? What if some boy knocks her up or something? You really need to be more worried about these kinds of things. I understand that, I really do. But I also know my daughter and trust her to make the right decisions. It really is sad that you can't see the way she's lying to you. Anyways, I know you said you're not feeling good, but the least you can do is toss the laundry in the washing machine. I won't be getting home until quite late tonight. Right, of course. I'll try and get that done. I just need to lie down for a little bit longer first, I think. Cheryl, just when are you finally going to get back there? Sorry, I was just finishing up the doctors right now. And before I go home, I'm going to shop at the store and do some shopping. You need to get home right now and deal with Sally. Deal with Sally? What happened? Did she do something? She was calling me an old hag again. She was? But we just talked the other day about not using that kind of language with people. Well, apparently you didn't do good enough job since she's still misbehaving. Hold on a second. I'm just getting a message from Sally right now. She's texting you right now? Well then good, you better take this chance to really lay into her. I just read her message and she wrote that you tossed out the food that I had prepared for dinner last night. She said what? That is just ridiculous. Why would I even do something like that? She's obviously just lying to you. But ever since you came to live with us, you've done that plenty of times. I mean, does she even have any proof that I did what she's accusing me of? Well, no, it's not like she has any pictures or anything, just the text, I guess. Well, there you go again. That means that it's highly likely that your daughter is just lying to you. But I don't really think that Sally is that kind of girl at all. You really need to start listening to me more often. I know what I'm talking about and you don't. I know how you feel about Sally, Melissa, but I really think that you're misjudging her. She's never anything but sweet around me, and I would really like if you stopped talking so negatively about her. You a dumb woman and an even dumber mother. You really need to take a step back and look at this objectively. Your daughter is nothing but a little liar. Melissa, please, there is no need for that kind of language at all. Even if Sally did do something that upset you, I'm sure she must have had some sort of reason for doing it. She's not the type of person who would go out her way to hurt someone. When are you going to wake up and face the truth? Honestly, how does my son let you two get away with acting like that all the time? Melissa, I really appreciate your concerns, but I really don't think that it's your place to tell me how to raise my daughter. Are you really going to try and pick a fight with me over this? Maybe you're where Sally gets her nasty attitude from. You're both so full of yourself, it all makes sense now. I really don't think that Sally is full of herself at all. Well, that's because you don't know the person that your daughter truly is. Anyways, you went to the doctor today, right? Did they say that you were going through a menopause like I thought? No, actually, they said it didn't appear to be that. The doctor just thought that it might have been some combination of a cold with some other symptoms just from everyday stresses. Well, good for you, I guess. I really was worried that something was wrong since I had been feeling like this for a while. Anyways, I'm going to the store to pick up some things for dinner. Will you better get back home as fast as you can? You've been slacking off way too much when it comes to keeping the house clean. Not to mention the fact that you still need to punish your daughter. Right, I'll try to get home quickly then. I just got home, but I don't see you anywhere. You just got home? Oh shoot, I just left to go to the store. I guess we must have passed each other or something. But what in the world happened here? I got home and your grandmother was lying on the floor covered in bruises. She said that you jumped on her back and were hitting her. Oh yeah, that's right, I did that. She kept screaming for help. It was pretty funny, to be honest. Sally, why would you do something like that? 
What did your grandmother do that could have possibly provoked that? I really don't think that it's something to joke about. I only gave that old hag what she had coming. So don't expect me to apologize because I won't do it. Sally, you can't talk about your grandmother that way and you certainly can't hit her. I'm very disappointed in you. For sure, for sure. Anyways, how are you feeling today? Any better? Are you asking about my condition? Well, I guess I'm feeling fine, thanks. I take that you still haven't had your afternoon tea then. I know you used that little tea infuser thing to have that special tea you like. Well, no, I haven't drunk it yet. It's sitting on the counter steeping, in fact. Well, I just thought you should have known that the reason you've been feeling so bad lately is all because of Grandma. What's that supposed to mean? I mean that I came home early from school today and I saw Grandma putting something in your tea while you were out of the room. Wait, what? You're joking, right? It's no joke. I really saw her stir some kind of powder in the leaves. I was going to dump everything out, but then Grandma tried to stop me, and that's when we started fighting. Obviously, I won the fight, but I think she might have been putting in some kind of sleeping medicine. Sleeping medicine? Well, it would explain why I'm always feeling so lethargic. Not to mention the fact that that's a crime. I mean, what would happen if you got in a car and didn't know you had the medicine in your system? You could get really hurt or even really hurt someone else. Oh, Sally, I see now that you were just trying to protect me from something your grandma was doing. Thank you so much for catching that, and I'm sorry for being so upset with you earlier. But you shouldn't have to apologize for anything. If anyone should be sorry, it's grandma. Oh, I'll take care of grandma, don't worry. But I really am grateful to you for looking out for me. Well, okay, as long as you think you can handle her by yourself. I do, but obviously I'm going to have a talk about all of this with your dad. We'll make sure that your grandma answers for what she's been doing. Cheryl, you have got some nerve. Do you know that? Do you really think that this is any way to treat your own mother-in-law? You being my mother-in-law doesn't change the fact about what you were doing. Did you really think I could just let you get away with this? If anything, you should be grateful that we stopped at kicking you out of the house. You mean that you really don't see a problem with kicking a poor old woman out of her house? How can you just throw me out on the streets like that? It isn't just me. Even your own son agreed that it was for the best. You were literally drugging my tea and you expect me to do nothing about it? There's no way that I can live with someone who would do that. But you forced me to pack my bags and leave. I don't have anywhere to go. You should have thought about that before doing what you did. Are you really going to try and make yourself the victim in all of this? You came to us asking for the place to live and we let you in. If you really couldn't see this coming as a result of what you were doing, then that's on you. But you don't have any proof of any of this. It's just Sally's word against mine, right? And you know how much that girl hates me, so of course, she would lie about that. I just don't think she's the kind of person that you seem to think she is. Yes, she is. She has dyed her hair, and she listens to loud music. Do you really think that anyone who does that can be a good person? And just what kind of mother even lets her daughter go around like that? I'll just go to the police and report the assault that Sally did to me. What do you think about that? You're more than welcome to go to the police. But I think the only person who would get in trouble is you. And just why do you think that, huh? You don't have any proof of things that you're accusing me of. Whereas I have the bruises that Sally left me. Clearly, they would have no choice but to believe me. Okay then, if you really feel that way, go ahead and tell the police. I won't do anything to stop you. You'll see. Sally will get kicked out of school. This will ruin her life. Okay then, you keep talking and talk. Now go walk the walk. But I'm just warning you that Sally does actually have footage of you putting the sleeping medicine in my tea. 
so I would stop accusing her of lying at the very least. Wait, what? Yes, when she walked through the door when she got home, she was on her phone and switched to the camera to record you. So I'm afraid that we do actually have evidence of what you did. Would you still like to go to the police? But I could be doing anything in the video. How could the cops even know what is it that I was doing to your tea? Hmm, do you really want to test that out? I, uh, well... Let's try a different example. Say that I were to go to the police because I got stabbed, okay? And what if the only evidence I had was of some crazy person in my off waving around a knife moments before I was injured? Is it the footage of the person committing the crime itself? No, but it's quite incriminating nonetheless. You really think that that's how the police would see it? I'm just asking you to think about the bigger picture here. Sally stepped in to stop what you were doing and she has injuries off herself. You scratch her quite badly. So the police would also have to take that into account. Okay, wait, maybe I did take things just a little too far. But I just thought that you needed to rest. Even if I believe that, it still doesn't excuse literally putting something in my tea without telling me. You know that I drink that tea pretty frequently. What if something bad happened to me? But I never was intending to hurt you, I swear. Except that you were always mad that I wasn't doing enough around the house while I was feeling sick, right? You were saying all kinds of cruel things to me about how a wife needs to keep her health so that she can take care of her family. You tried to pin so much of me when nothing was my fault. I just had no idea that it was the medicine making you feel that way. You know when I went to the doctor's office they asked me if I was on any other medication and I said that I wasn't. I even told you about that when I got home, but you knew the whole time that that wasn't true. It was just a prank, really. Well, I think that it was one taken way too far. I mean, what if I left the house in my car? I could have gotten into an accident or killed someone. What would be the point of the prank then? Please, Cheryl, I'm so, so sorry. I just didn't think that far ahead. It's really not that far to jump and make. But anyways, I refuse to live under the same roof as you anymore. But what am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to live? I can't just be out on here on my own. You're my family. You have to take care of me. You have your retirement money. You'll just have to be careful about saving and spending it. Besides, you're still a young lady. You can always find a job if you need. You can't be serious. I, I deserve to have a quiet retirement. I shouldn't have to work. I'm afraid that you really should have thought about that before you did what you did. Please, I promise to never do it again. You have to forgive me. Actually, I really don't. You did something horrible and now you're paying for it. Don't ever come near me again. After that, Melissa sat outside of the house, refusing to leave. We finally called the police and that's when she started screaming and trying to run away. By the time the next morning came around, all of Melissa's belongings were gone from our front yard. I have no idea where she ran off, but when she was finally caught, the police let her off with a stern warning and made her promise to stay away from our house. I hear that now she's living in a tiny apartment all by herself. She tried reaching out to my husband and I and complained about how hard her life was and how she was always in need of money, but we ignored her calls for help. I don't think we'll ever see her again until her funeral. As for my family, things settled down quite a bit after Melissa left. Sally is getting ready for her senior year in high school and still getting good grades. Obviously, there are times when I need to rein in her rebellious attitude, but I'm very happy knowing that I have such a mature and trustworthy daughter. I still think that it's very sad how everything went down the way that it did. I really thought that Melissa and I were getting along so well. There were times when I thought she could be a bit overbearing, but I always understood. It was just her being a concerned mother and grandmother. I would have never ever dreamed that she could have been capable of what she did to me. 
Another person I feel quite badly for over how all of this happened is my husband. When his mom asked if she could come live with us, I was a little apprehensive at first. He was the one who talked to me into allowing Melissa to be with us. After he found out what she was doing to me, he apologized for never noticing and clearly felt very guilty about it all. I told him that he had no way of knowing that his mom would act that way. Still, I think it may take some time for him to overcome that on top of cutting his mom out of our lives. Thankfully though, I'm glad that I trusted my instinct and had faith in the person that I knew my daughter really was deep down. And if it wasn't for Sally's bravery in confronting her grandma who knows what might have happened. I never wanted my daughter to go through something like that. But I'm much less worried about her ability to take care of herself now. The food you made for me today was as disgusting as ever. What? The burger you packed me for lunch. The meat was like a hockey puck. The bread was soggy. How could you be this bad at cooking? I didn't think it was that bad. You must be delusional. A good wife should be able to cook well for her husband. You should take notes from my mom. Yeah, but your mom is just really good at cooking. You know I used to cook in a restaurant. So I don't think my cooking is as bad as you say it is. Get a grip. I don't want to hear any more excuses out of you. Why do you have to be so critical about the way I cook? You're being really offensive. Just stop it. I'll stop when you can make me something actually edible. Whatever. I won't make anything else for you anymore. You're just gonna run away from your responsibilities as a housewife. Well, I was thinking about starting to work again. What? You're just going to complain about my cooking every day. I'd rather find something else to do. So I was thinking maybe I'd go back to working at a restaurant. You're just using that as an excuse to neglect what you have to do at home. If you go back to working at a restaurant, you'd be taking away the time we have to spend together. Isn't that why you quit once we got married? Yeah, but I just feel bad if you think the food I make for you is this awful. Oh my god, I really don't want to have to keep having the same conversation with you, Jenny. I've been nice up till now. Stop testing my patience. Why can't you be more like my mom? She's never served me a bad meal in my life. Why don't you go learn how to cook from her? I feel bad for our future kids if they have to eat the slop you put on the table. How are you going to feel when they tell you, Mommy, this food is nasty? Yeah, that's why I want to go back to work in a restaurant. And if you do, you won't finish work until late at night, right? So who's going to make me dinner? If you really think my cooking is that bad, why don't you just cook for yourself? Wow, you just want to be lazy, don't you? That's it. You're fired for being my wife. I'm not trying to be lazy. Ugh, stop being so sarcastic. You're being really mean to me. What's the point if I cook for myself? You're the one that needs to practice and get better at making something that doesn't taste terrible. As your husband, it's my duty to eat the food you put in front of me. Even if it does taste like vomit. I really can't believe how big of a jerk you're being. If you honestly think that, I don't want to force you to eat what I make for you. No, I'll eat it. Unfortunately, I have no choice now that I'm married to you. You don't have to eat it if you don't want to. I really don't mind if you eat whatever you want. As a married couple, we have to support each other, don't we? So I'll keep eating your vile cooking if it means you'll eventually get better. You should be grateful you don't have to cook for anyone else but me. You don't have to work at a restaurant. Just practice cooking at home. What about the dinner I made last night? You took one bite and then threw it in the trash. Oh yeah, that was a real nightmare. I honestly thought you were trying to poison me. I'm shocked you thought that was fit for a human being to eat. And then what did you say after? If this is what you expect me to eat, I'd rather find my dinner in a dumpster? Yeah, and I meant it. Is it really too much to ask for my wife to cook something that doesn't make me want to puke? Man, I really wish my mom was still cooking for me. If only I didn't get married. Whatever. I'm a good guy, so I promise to keep biting the bullets so you can get better at cooking. This is nonsense. What? If that's how you feel, does that mean you're just going to insult the way I cook forever? Not forever. Just until you actually get better. Where is this all coming from? You never said anything like this before we got married. Hmm. I don't remember if I did or not. I never thought you'd complain this much. What's your problem? Now you're trying to play the victim? You're the one who got worse at cooking. How could you possibly blame me for that? 
Just shut up with the excuses. Fine. You can make your own dinner tonight. You should try at least once to do it on your own. You're out of your mind. Cooking isn't a man's job. A man doesn't belong in the kitchen. It's embarrassing to even think about it. Me cooking would be the same as saying my wife at home is useless. I don't think you could get any worse. I believe in you to get better, so just do it. When are you going to stop complaining? Yeah, maybe I'll complain. But that doesn't mean I won't keep eating the food you put in front of me. Even if it tastes like dog food, I guess I have to keep eating it. Luckily for you, I'm a man that can tough it out through anything. Even if I puke, I'll keep on eating. Why do you have to think like that? Whatever. You don't have to eat the food I make anymore. Oh yeah? I'm at your parents' house right now. What are you doing there? I had a long talk with your mom. In fact, I even cooked for her. You told me to go learn from her, didn't you? Yeah. So what? What did you tell her? I told her everything. I showed her everything you've been texting me. Why would you do that? Your mom was actually really impressed with what I made. Oh, wow. And then she told me that she never actually cooked for you as much as you said she did. In fact, she said she barely cooked for you at all. She couldn't believe the way you were talking to me and apologized like a hundred times. Okay. What do you mean, okay? You lied to me, didn't you? I wouldn't say lie. Honestly, I've had enough. What are you talking about? I'm talking about everything. The way you lie to me, the way you talk to me, the way you insult the food I work hard to make for you. What's it going to take to make you happy? Like I said, I never lied to you. Whatever. I want a divorce. What? Are you insane? Why do you want to get divorced? I've already packed my stuff and left. That's the real reason why I'm here right now. I came to tell them I'm leaving you. Don't go anywhere. I'm coming there right now. I'll be there as soon as I finish work. Don't bother. Both your parents think it's for the best, too. What? What do you mean they think it's for the best? Now they know all about how you verbally abuse me. And how you throw away everything I make for you to eat. I told them everything. No, you're wrong. There's a reason for why I did that. Oh, is that an excuse? You really love excuses, don't you? No, I'm being serious. Just listen to me. I actually love everything you've ever cooked for me. But there's always room for improvement, right? That's why I said your cooking was disgusting, even though I actually enjoyed it. I just wanted you to get even better. Why would you do that? I just thought if you could focus more on your cooking, you'd be able to get better. Focus? You're the one who needs to focus on how you're talking to me. What you're saying is ridiculous. I just wanted you to make food that I like. How was I supposed to know what you like if you said everything I made for you was bad? It's impossible. But everything I said was to help you. It was all to help you be a better cook. I'm the one with the cooking experience. I'm the one who worked for a long time at a restaurant. If you can't put up with my cooking, it's the same as saying you can't put up with me at all. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. You have to understand that. I'm really telling you the truth now. To be honest, I couldn't care less. Don't say that. I've put up with this kind of abuse for nearly a year now. I'm emotionally exhausted. What do you mean? It means that I've decided I'm leaving you and nothing's going to change my mind. Oh, but why? I literally just told you how delicious I think your cooking is. Like I said, I thought not telling you was for your own good. A bird will never learn to fly if it doesn't leave the nest, right? I had to push you to make you better. <laughs> what are you talking about? Now I'm the one who's sick of hearing excuses. Between yesterday and today, I've really had enough of your abuse. Oh, please don't say that. We have a long future ahead of ourselves. Even if, for argument's sake, you actually were tough on me to try and make me better, did you really have to throw out the food I made for you? I don't think you realize how much effort I put in so I could make that for you. Do you have any idea how long it took to make that? Uh, like three hours? No, you idiot. It took almost a full day. All of that work for you to just take one bite and throw it out. Jenny, I'm really sorry. I had no idea you went through all that trouble just to make dinner for me. And on top of all of that, you forgot about our one-year anniversary yesterday. Just please give me a chance to make it up to you. I'm so sorry. Too late. I'm not home, and I've already left your parents' house. The first step for me leaving you was telling your parents about it, and now that's finished. I'm not setting foot in our house again. 
Don't say that. Just please cook for me one more time. I promise to be honest and tell you how good I think your cooking is. I think it's a little late for telling the truth. You really put me through hell this past year. Your parents gave me some money to help me get through this. They said it was the least they could do after raising a son who could be so cruel to his own wife. You better work hard so you can repay your parents. You can't be serious. Are you really leaving me? Unlike you, I don't lie. So yes, I'm really leaving you. Jenny, please, I love you. Just give me another chance. I'll do whatever it takes to get you back. You're really desperate, aren't you? It's too late to fix things. Oh yeah, by the way, your parents said they've disowned you. They had no idea you were such a horrible person. I guess all that's left for you to do is to go try your excuses out on your parents. Jenny left the divorce papers with Mark's parents. Mark was reluctant at first, but he eventually signed and submitted the forms for the divorce. However, Mark was seen loitering outside of Jenny's parents' home, where he believed she was staying. There were even reports of him stalking her, and he was eventually taken into custody by the police. A restraining order was filed against him. Jenny began working at a restaurant in her old hometown. She's looking forward to finally being independent and free from Mark's abuse.